Um, the movie. So I'm just going to start, um, I'll speak for about five minutes and then um, James will come up to finish the rest of our presentation. And thank you very much to NIDOS for inviting us to come speak today. It's, it's a great honour for us to be involved in this. Um, and I think what I'm going to really talk to you about from a young person's perspective um, is the importance of young people being involved in global justice issues um, and the benefit really for young people in Scotland for doing that. So um, I'm Kevin Temple, I'm an MSYP and I'm the convener of the Education and Lifelong Learning Committee um, in the Scottish Youth Parliament. So, so some of the things that I think are really important for young people and it comes across through the work of young people in the Youth Parliament and their wider communities is very much the involvement of young people in these development initiatives um, and issues across the world actually it leads to a lot more greater understanding of communities as a whole in Scotland, social justice, the concept of social justice, what that means, um, and actually how young people in Scotland can influence what communities look like, um, whether those communities are the communities with, in the partnerships or communities uh, elsewhere in the world, or whether that's communities in Scotland. So it's important uh, very much for us as young people um, to be involved in global justice because not only can young people uh, work with other young people across the world, but also young people in Scotland can then use those skills, transfer those skills um, back to shape their own communities. And I think one of the things that's so important about the work that people like yourselves do um, and lots of organisations involved in social justice is actually um, empower young people to see themselves as agents of change in Scotland. So it's not just about the great work which, which happens um, and the benefits which uh, the rest of the world see from young people being involved, but actually I think the fact that it, it gives young people in Scotland the confidence and the recognition that they can also shape their communities around them, they can influence the way that their communities uh, function, what they look like, and I think that's also a really important point to remember about the way young people get involved in Scotland. Um, I think that actually the more young people get involved in, in these sort of initiatives as well, um, I also think it empowers them to think about Scottish civic society wider than the communities just, um, and I think it also just it, it empowers us to actually expand our horizons as well. Um, I, I went on a, um, I went with Action for Southern Africa to a small event in Southern Africa a couple of years ago, and it was very much life changing for me um, in recognising the, the amount of impact that I could have when I came back to Scotland. So I think that's really important for young people today in Scotland, um, and it's a side that we should forget. I think that attitudes and values are really important for young people um, involved in, in global justice issues. So young people who are involved, um, I think actually really hate to shape young people's values. Um, our values of citizenship, of fairness, of compassion, and I think it's a really key way as well to promote understanding and tackle xenophobia and racism, um, which is a problem that blights our communities in Scotland as well. Um, I think one of the examples as well of something which which taught me to sort of appreciate the different nuances that communities face in different countries as well. When I was in Swaziland, I was speaking to um, a young woman and I was talking to her about the work that I've done with um, young women in LGBT communities and she, she whispered to me very quietly that she, she really wished she could do some work like that or there was support for her there. And there's some great work being done. Um, but I think what it taught me was to be very grateful for the rights which we do have and actually that I have more of a responsibility to extend and further extend those rights for young people in Scotland and the people of Scotland um, today. I think also with it, we're, we are operating within an increasingly globalised um, world and I think developing that internationalised outlook for young people, it's important for increasing Scotland's outward mobility and I know that's something the Scottish Government is really keen to do at the moment, so it's great that they're funding um, the outward mobility strategy um, for that to be happening right now and I think it's really important that we also keep that in mind um, when we're actually looking at young people and doing global justice issues. Um, I think it's really important for improving young people's language skills, um, confidence and actually just knowledge and understanding of, of, of the societies we live in and, and the wider world. Um, I think also very much allows young people to recognise that due to the increased interdependence issues, issues like sustainability, environmental issues, it's not just about putting a bit of paper in the right recycling box, it's actually about whether someone else has access to sanitation and clean water as well, I think. It really brings home what, what environmentalism and sustainability really means to young people in Scotland. Um, a couple of minutes. Um, one of the things
things as well that I think is really important is we look at what, what sort of young people actually get involved in global justice issues in Scotland um, because making a generalisation, I'm pretty sure that it's um, the young people do get involved, it's white middle class young people who get involved and I think that one of the opportunities we should also think about is, um, is a way that we can improve social mobility through getting uh, social justice, justice issues further far, far into our communities in terms of who gets involved, who takes ownership of that, and therefore <coughs> those benefits, a few of which I've outlined and plenty of speakers previously have outlined the benefits, I think it's really important that we take that upon ourselves in terms of social mobility in Scotland and making sure there's more different types of young people get involved in that and reaping those benefits and, and creating those partnerships elsewhere as well. Um, so I'm just going to wrap up to pass over to James in a moment, um, but we're very interested while we're here in looking at ways that we can increase the number and different types of those young people get involved in work in global justice. Um, we're also interested in how we can identify and provide solutions to young people's engagement and the barriers to engagement and why perhaps um, out with schools as well young people's participation in, um, in global justice issues might be, might be less than it could be. So I'll just hand over to my colleague James, and he's going to talk to you about the SYP's involvement in global justice issues and some of the work and organisations that you've come with. So thank you, Dr. James. Hello, uh, I'm James. I'm replacing uh, Kieran, who has mentioned Kieran's ill. Uh, Kieran knows a little bit more about what we're going to talk about today, but he's ill, so we can't be instead. Um, it's pretty darn likely that you will have watched the video as part of the Coney 2012 viral video. Probably the most successful social media campaign I've ever seen. The video ramped up 104 million views in two weeks, mainly through links to the website over Facebook and Twitter. It drew worldwide attention to the evil exploits of Joseph Coney, the leader of the Lord's Resistance Army of Uganda who used child soldiers to fight in the Civil War. Most of the people who watched it were young people. Being a user of Facebook myself, I have become a professional at ignoring the mundane, vain, vacuous, ill-informed, brain-shatteringly, aggravating and frankly offensive things which you usually see on Facebook. And that's just my profile. <laughs> but, but that day, Facebook was full of links to the Coney site and, and previously pretty indifferent young people, all saying that they were signing up to donate to the organisation which made the video, Invisible Children. In the end, controversy brought down most of Invisible Children's extravagant plans, from allegations of rather dubious uses of charity funds, to the organisation being backed by some quite strange evangelist groups, uh, to the video's director, Jason Russell, um, having a widely publicised public breakdown. Their ambitious Cover the night idea, where every city in the world would be plastered with Coney 2012 posters by young activists, was planned too long after the short lived hysteria had died down and never really materialised. But just imagine if a more competent charity had run a campaign which was so successful from the outset. Joseph Coney is, according to the aims of the campaign and one of its very few successes, a household name now, where he had previously been virtually unknown in this part of the world. The plight of child soldiers in Africa is more prominent in the minds of Western young people than it ever has been before. So there are many lessons to be learned from the Coney 2012 campaign about how we can engage young people in promoting global justice. In the Scottish Youth Parliament, we, are, we do our own bit to promote global justice. We work with the British Youth Council and our local youth parliaments in other parts of the UK, which are the, uh, the UK Youth Parliament, which is mostly just England these days, the Northern Ireland Youth Forum, the, and the Welsh one, which is called, wait for it, Funk Dragon. <laughs> the best example though, of how we link up with other organisations comes in the form of the UK um, Young Ambassadors Scheme. The UK Young Ambassadors provide a bridge between young people in the UK and, young, and people making decisions around the world. Young Ambassadors have re represented UK young people at many important meetings and forums. They have presented to education ministers in Malaysia, made the case for groups at 16 in Europe, uh, lobbied for action on climate change in Korea, and challenged David Cameron for action uh, to, to involve more young people in, in the GT, G20 summit in Canada, to name a few. <coughs> a couple of months ago, MSYP's Louise Cameron and Andrew Deans went to Brussels 
as part of the UK Young Ambassadors International Consultation Team. Andrew is part of the UK Youth Amb Young Ambassadors and Louise signed up to help carry out the consultation which was set up to the voice of young people all the way to the European Parliament. Last year, a group of MSYPs travelled to Malawi to advise on the setting up of the Malawi Youth Parliament. They met members of the Malawi Youth Parliament and, among other things, discussed the best way to, turn, to, to run the Youth Parliament so that it has the best possible effect on the young people of the country, delivered talks on how the Scottish Youth Parliament works, and were given talks by their Malawian equivalents about how their organisation works, and engaged with the Malawi, Malawian government. And they learned lessons that which they brought back here to Scotland. Having met their Malawian counterparts and Malawian politicians, they also volunteered in a school, a hospital, uh, an orphanage and a young members institute. Throughout their trip, they maintained an internet blog called MSYPs in Malawi. Now, as I said, we do our bit, but there is plenty more to be done uh, to effectively engage young people in these issues. I will talk about one thing that you can do. I don't have a huge amount of time, obviously, so I'm not going to go into a big lecture. But on Tuesday, I got the agenda through for this uh, conference, and as you may have noticed yourselves, it is well resourced with complex segments of corporate and succinctly accurate technical uh, terminology unique to the relevant subject. In other words, long winded sentences which are full of complexities and jargon. Not to take anything away from the intelligence of the young people of Scotland, but most of us don't understand, like, or want to understand your jargon. Neither do, neither do we like it when you attempt to speak our language when it is really far away from your native tongue. If you, no offense. If, you, if, you want, if you want to engage young people, if you want to make them care about what you care about, then you must be that young person. By that, I mean you must be young again. You must think how young people think and talk how young people talk. Drop the jargon. Stop using it to convey your ideas to each other. Be passionate. And if you're passionate, sound passionate. Tear yourselves away from the linguistic shackles that bind you. So there's a few things for you to model in your heads. Thank you very much for inviting us here.